It's an emotional day in Columbia, but how could it not be honoring the seniors who came to South Carolina and set a new standard? They won a national title. They're on track for another. It's the Freshies' farewell, at least to the regular season. The Freshies, you won over the hearts of our staff, our team, our community, and our fans. As we say goodbye, we know that your impact will live forever. Thank you for sharing all of you with all of us, and we wish you nothing but God's favor. You're watching ESPN's Road to Champ Week, presented by Wendy's. We welcome you to the SEC on ESPN. What an important Sunday, an emotional Sunday for the South Carolina program, a sold out crowd to see the seniors who came in as the number one ranked class. Their senior day is finally here. A few tears shed before this one tips off. Let's go, Courtney Lau alongside Christy Thomas-Cuddy. And how could you not be emotional on this day? These seniors have come in, they've set a new standard, and it's incredible, 66% of their career, Christy, they have been the number one team in the nation. Well, I'll top you with this one. Only eight losses during that span. They came in as the number one recruiting class. They are on a mission to repeat as the number one team in the country. Don Staley talked this week about the difference in this group. They came in and did it together. It wasn't about the individual accolades. It's truly remarkable when you think about the core five players who sacrificed egos and have stayed here to not only win, but compete at the highest level. And we have seen them now become the standard bearer in the country for women's basketball. John Staley said, it's not going to be emotional for me today. There's a championship on the line. South Carolina already has a share of the SEC regular season title. They want it all for themselves, and they can do it with a win today. Well, to do that, they've got to go through a really stingy UGA defense. 3-2 matchup, eager to see how many paint touches South Carolina can get here this afternoon. Yeah, this defense causes problems for a lot of people, and South Carolina struggled to find its way through it in the first meeting. But right there, Aaliyah Boston already in the high post. You see the Georgia starting five. Again, they'll be without Zoisha Smith and Kari Nyblak, both unavailable today again for Georgia. But they found their way in this new system that Katie Abrahamson Henderson has brought to Georgia. Absolutely. Started SEC's play a little slow, but it picked it up in the last eight games. Can they take this tough defense here on the road and shut down this high powered offense of South Carolina today? A veteran starting five for South Carolina. No changes for the South Carolina Gamecocks. And why would you? Leah Boston almost had two more points. South Carolina comes in 34 straight wins, Christy. And they're on a mission. I, I think for them, they want nothing more than an outright SEC regular season tournament, a regular season championship, as well as a tournament championship. And it clinched a share of the SEC title on Thursday with that win over Tennessee. Chloe Chapman driving in for Georgia and a little too far underneath the basket. Well, shot selection is going to be key for Georgia because we know South Carolina wants to get out and push pace. Jordan Isaacs with the block on Zaya Cook. Chapman over to Brittany Smith, one of the transfers that came over from UCF with Coach Abe, and she works her way around Boston. I just think Brittany Smith's key to Georgia getting the victory here on the road today. So good. The transfer has done nothing but anything that Katie Abrahamson Henderson has asked for. That's the defense, that's the leadership, and that is the scoring. Isaiah Cook gets fouled underneath. Dawn Staley, everybody wondered, would it be emotional for her? I think we maybe saw one tear shed a little bit before senior day. And she said, look, I love this group because they do whatever it takes to win the basketball game. I don't think we've made enough about just how selfless this senior class is for South Carolina. We know how gifted they are, but it takes special individuals to do what they have done in terms of winning, you know, in the right way here. That's going to be the second foul already on Jordan Isaacs of Georgia. 
Jordan Isaac's just a really physical player, and I, that's a tough one, but it, she does stick that butt out a little bit, and that's what caught Bill. And she's the emotional leader for Georgia, just really physical player. And post-step will be tested here today for the Bulldogs against this really big South Carolina team. Depth is always tested when you play South Carolina because they have a ton of depth they can bring in off the bench. Bree Beal misses Aaliyah Boston with the rebound, trying to work around Nicholson, and she does. Boston with South Carolina's four points. Diamond battles back the other way. Transition could be important for Georgia. Absolutely. I think Georgia wants to minimize the times they have to set up in the half court to try to score. So that's off of turnovers, and that is in transition. Here, a Fletcher back over to Boston. Zaya Cook all alone for the three. She lit Georgia up last time, 31 points. Look, Georgia comes in on a five-game win streak. What's changed for them recently? Their defense, since they lost on the road, on the road at Texas A&M, their defense has been better and their rebounding has been better. Javin Nicholson misses the shot. Kira Fletcher is going to push. She pulls up at the SEC logo. And Coach Abe calls timeout. South Carolina feeling it early on senior day. They're up 9-4. to four. South Carolina off to a fast start. Four of eight from the field, 50% on senior day. They're trying to close out that SEC regular season title, the full title. This number one recruiting class, they were the ones that were honored today. Two Final Fours, a national championship. As you said, Christy, they've only lost eight games in their career. And we forget one season or one postseason was taken away due to COVID. So it's right. really remarkable when you think what might have even been for how good this class has been. And Courtney, for the first time, we're seeing some extended defense from South Carolina. And Don Staley tell, told me yesterday, I've been wanting to do some zone. I've been wanting to extend our pressure more, and we're going to do it tomorrow. Or today, I should say. And Georgia's able to score through it. Look, the strength of this Georgia team has been their defense. Absolutely. And we talked about since a loss at A&M, where they started 2-5 and five in SEC play, have since gone 7-1. and one. Defense has been better. Rebounding's been better. They've been more connected. And if they're going to win today, the defense has to be picking up here to slow down the Gamecocks. Now, Georgia's second in the SEC in scoring defense, but Aaliyah Boston seems to have found a way through that. Remember, she only had four points in that first meeting with Georgia. That was tied her career low. She's got four points right now. Well, I can already tell you the ball movement for South Carolina has been so much better in this game than when they first played in Athens. As you mentioned the turnaround for Coach Abe's squad. First seven games, two and five, last eight games. We were talking to Diamond Battles about this, and she said, look, we had to stop being stubborn. We had to buy into what Coach Abe was doing the whole team. Well, and you forget, this team, there's three transfers from UCF, two other transfers on this team, and then all new players for Abe. So when you look at it, only three players knew this system, and that takes time. That takes time to gel, and sometimes, yes, we as women are stubborn, and they had to understand it had to be one common mission, and I think that's what we're seeing now with Georgia. Letitia Amir here had a great look, missed the layup underneath. A diamond battles number three in black. She was one of the ones that transferred in. Been with Coach Abe. They've known each other about six years now, and Coach Abe told us, look, we're family at this point. And I've watched Diamond Battles develop from a freshman at UCF under Coach Abe's tutelage. And to see this explosive, dynamic player, she's a two-way player. She's a beast of a defensive player. She knows how to turn a team over and score in transition. But we've already seen her make the three, get to the rim in transition. She's got to score big here for Georgia today. And she's just gotten better as her career has gone on. She's like a fine wine. She's aged beautifully. <laughs> And Coach Abe told us, you know, after her sophomore season, she really got in the gym and worked on her game, and that's paid off. And you saw her, too, at her time during UCF just grow. I, she really started as this just dog. I'm going to yeah. use a UGA term. Dog of a defender there. And you see now just how explosive she is as a scorer. Courtney, first two SEC games, she averaged one point a game. Since then, 15 in SEC play. Aaliyah Boston is fouled going to the free throw line. Now Diamond Battles only had one point in the first meeting with South Carolina. That was 
back on January 2nd. Diamond Battles whistled for the foul. So Alicia Lewis checks in, number 23 in black, and Aaliyah Boston at the free throw line. How big were the cheers when Boston was announced before this game for senior day? It's, it's deserving, yes. first and foremost. But Courtney, it was it was very comical for me to watch warm up today because every time a senior would leave, the standing ovations yeah. <laughs> over and over and over. These Gamecock fans are family, and we know that. But they have given the senior class the appropriate amount of respect here already this afternoon. Audrey Warren. The hard hedge pays off in a turnover. Bree Beal coughing it right back up to Georgia. Georgia first in the SEC in steals per game. They average just over 10 steals a game. Warren trying to feed Javin Nicholson, and there's a kickball. Courtney, one thing that'll be interesting with this crowd noise today is Georgia's offensive execution when they're away from the bench versus the second half when they're right in front of it. Coach Abe's screaming right now trying to get play calls in with the hand signals, but players aren't seeing and hearing her. Lewis is going to pull it back, set back up with 13 seconds. Took a second to think about the three and then hit. Carolina using that ball movement that has improved so much this year. According, we talk a lot about South Carolina's defense, and sometimes it's just a matter of creating the space. Alicia Lewis with a great little hesitation pull back to create the space and get the shot up. Javin Nicholson was just whistled for her first foul, and Leticia Ami here steps to the free throw line. been one of the most versatile players in South Carolina history, can play one through five. She's an Olympian playing for Team Canada in Tokyo. The boss move I love most with Amir here is when she goes and defends the point guard. Oh, yeah. Team and has like a good two foot advantage on them. Talk about a big lineup. <laughs> I would give it up <laughs> if she was guarding me, that's for sure. Georgia's hit its last three shots to tie this up. Nicholson working on Boston, nine seconds. The turnaround, her shot has just gotten so much better. Such great footwork, really an undersized post player, but it never matters because she's so good at creating space to get her shot off. Javin Nicholson from last year to this year, totally different player. It's gonna be a push on Mallory Bates. Javin Nicholson knows she's got Boston on her, so she just does that little reverse spin move just to create enough space to get the shot off. Georgia with its first lead, but Aaliyah Boston at the free throw line, eight points. She's doubled what she did the last time around against this Georgia team, just had four points. And Courtney, something to watch, already five fouls called on the bigs of Georgia. Trying to get position and eliminate South Carolina from sealing them in the low block, and they're getting called for it. Yeah, Jordan Isaacs has two fouls. Mallory Bates was just whistled for her first. Alicia, Alicia Lewis has a foul. Not a post player, but at this rate, she may have to yeah. with the fouls getting called. And I think that's why Brittany Smith's on the bench right now. She was in foul trouble the entire time in the first matchup with these two teams. And I think Coach Abe's trying to pace her and try to be able to use her throughout the game. Nicholson at the elbow. Just makes it look easy. I mean, she really has guard skills. But in a post body, that's how quick her release is, how quick her footwork is. Leticia Me here on the backside, sneaking in under the basket. South Carolina's hit four of its last five. Georgia's hit its last four shots. Two of the best defensive teams in the country. We're getting an offensive outburst. Three second violation on Georgia. 
We talked about this 3-2 matchup, and you see how Diamond Battles is worried about Kiara Fletcher. That's how Ami here gets the backdoor slip there. Only thing that would have better was a true alley -oop. She could have done it. Camilla Cardoso coming in off the bench. Her shot altered by Bates. Nicholson. Into the hands of L.A. Letitia Me here. Georgia, for all practical purposes, has three point guards on the floor right now. It's going to be the first foul on Aaliyah Boston. So Mallory Bates going to the free throw line, a six-year player for this Georgia team. Raven Johnson checks in. South Carolina likes to bring her in off the bench, and things speed up when she's running the point. Here's our big Monday women's basketball matchup. Number 19, Texas hosting Baylor at the Moody Center in Austin. Longhorns 13 and three. They lead the Big 12 by one game. Coverage begins at seven Eastern on ESPN2 and the app. I think now that Raven Johnson's in the game for South Carolina, will the three-two matchup even be able to be set up for Georgia? That's what Raven Johnson's strength is. She doesn't want a defense. She's just gonna push tempo. Well, that's a freshman doing that. She had a great game against UConn. Zero turnovers in that game. Well, I learned she does film with both Don Staley and Jolette Law. Those are two great minds. Two great point guards. Yes. At, you know, in our game. And so she's just learning, learning, learning. And Jolette Law told me yesterday, she goes, she does things that we can't coach. So it's for her right now, teaching her the why of things. Diamond Battles weaving. She got a good look at the basket, but overshot. Raven up ahead to Bree Beal. Saves it to Leticia Ami here, sharing the basketball. The unselfish place shining for the South Carolina team. When you see how hard it is to execute offensively, high, double high on ball screen, and Bill just gets right over the top. So South, I'm sorry, so Georgia has no advantage from setting screens. Rebeal double team going up. It'll be Georgia basketball, 46 seconds on the clock. Being the number one team in the country doesn't just happen. It takes extra effort. Bill, knowing where she is on the floor, tiptoes that line to save the ball into a me here for the two. That play right there, that's Bree Beal's whole career, being that selfless teammate. She got into the starting lineup as a freshman because of her defense, and this year, she's really added that scoring threat. Well, and I think true basketball fans love to see it because you want the hard work to be paid off, and last four games, Bree Beal's averaging 11 points a game, but more importantly, she is shooting 54%. That's how much her offense has improved. Fire, straight fire. South Carolina back on top. It's been a close first quarter. Shot clock still on. Lewis taking her time. Bates at the elbow. Rebound by Cardoso. Leticia Me here, fed by Raven Johnson. Shot by Battles is off. South Carolina ending on a 6-0 run. And it's the story is Aaliyah Boston here on senior day. 11 points already in the quarter. Wow. Four years have went so fast. It felt like we just moved out to campus and began our journey together. From day one, we called each other the Freshies. And four years later, it's still our name for each other. Breathe. My roommate and sister for life. From day one on campus, we've been attached. I'm thankful that we've been able to share the ups and downs of our experiences because we've been able to help each other through. I've loved seeing you grow into who you are today and become so confident in yourself. Your growth on and off the court has been amazing to see and you are deserving of everything that is coming your way. 
Continue seeing the person that you are because you make everyone around you better. Let God continue to guide your path and nothing will be able to stop you. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I love you guys. If you need to have an emotional moment, just go to Gamecock Twitter and look at the full videos the seniors released. Whew. That was me in my hotel room last night. Yeah, and this morning when I rewatched it again. <laughs> Senior day here in Columbia, honoring a class that came in number one in the nation. We'll leave with at least one national championship. They're on a 6-0 run right now, shooting 53% to start this game. It's been remarkable, because again, this is a really good defense by Georgia, but you're seeing just their ability to get the shots they want, and Mallory Bates responds for Georgia. That's gonna be a foul on Camilla Cardoso, and Bates looking for the three-point play. We've seen the bigs of Georgia be very disciplined and deliberate in their moves. That time, Bates not known for the range, gets the in one. Mallory Bates been in it for the long haul with this Georgia team, a sixth year player. Dealt with an injury her sophomore season. She tore her ACL early in the season and had to redshirt. When the ball goes to the high post against this 3-2 match, it puts so much pressure on the back line of Georgia. That time, though, South Carolina can't make them pay. There's been a couple of times South Carolina's had an easy look right underneath and haven't been able to hit. Mallory Bates finding herself back at the free throw line, and that's the second on Camilla Cardoso. Well, I like the pace that Georgia's trying to play at. I said it early. They need to score in transition. They need to score off the turnovers. I just didn't expect it to be Mallory Bates, all 6-2 of her beating all of South Carolina down the floor. Bates gets the first. Aaliyah Boston back in the game. Already 11 points today for Aaliyah. Just a typical day at the office for Aaliyah Boston. It's another day. Georgia back on top. And Meteor was there for a second on the baseline. And you, if you can just watch the back line of this matchup zone, how hard they're having to work to defend the bigs of South Carolina. Victoria Saxton flying up to get that rebound, and she's fouled. And that's the second foul on Brittany Smith. They already have Jordan Isaacs, one of their post players. She's got two fouls as well. And that was a key for Georgia. Could they keep their bigs on the floor? We already knew they'd be tested because of the size of South Carolina. Now, due to foul trouble, how can they try to get through this half? Got a one-point lead right now. One of two for Victoria. This is a subtle thing, but I, I said a little while ago they had three-point guns on the floor to Georgia. Now they have two, and Raven Johnson was face guarding Alicia Lewis. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Audrey Warren. Her first. And that's just a wrinkle that Don Saylor likes to do. Take the ball out of the point guard's hands, make someone else initiate an offense. here on the baseline. Saxon trying to post up. <laughs> Cook offensive foul on Zaya Cook. Her first. Diamond battles the American Conference. Defensive player of the year going against one of the best offensive players. Moves her feet and Zaya Cook definitely drops that shoulder. Coach Abe told us Diamond Battle, she just plays with an edge, and that's the Coach Abe type player, right? That player with a, an edge, something a little bit extra, and that's another offensive foul on Audrey Warren, now two against her. I was talking to Don Staley yesterday, and I, I just said, what's it take to beat your team? And 
I, I, is she going to give you an answer to well, that? Well, there was a lot there, but I said, <laughs> I said, let, let me give you what I think. I said, I think you need quality post depth. She said, definitely, because we've got good bigs. Yes. And she said, it takes disciplined guard play because of the defensive pressure and how much they wear on you. And I think that's why we see so many offensive foul calls in terms of when South Carolina's on defense because t players just get outside of themselves and try to do too much. That's an offensive foul on Letitia and me here, her first. We've got all kinds of offensive fouls going in this one on both sides. Chloe Chapman's turn to set things up, and she's guarded by Ami here. That's what we talked about, Ami here guarding the point guard. Battles off balance shot. Saxton on the boards. Mallory Bates did a nice job of working on Boston and keeping that pass from coming in. Lewis is going to pull it out. Too much traffic. Offensive foul on Mallory Bates, her second. This entire play starts because of the effort of South Carolina in transition defense. Georgia has to pull it out, and you see Bates, honestly, I think the ball would hit yeah. Zaya Cook there. That's four players now for Georgia with two fouls. Saxon trying to elevate. Bree Hall in the game for South Carolina. Possession arrow stays with the Gamecocks. I would have loved for South Carolina just to wait a second longer when the ball went to high post because Boston had Alicia Lewis on her on the low block and they missed her. Boston loses it. There's Alicia Lewis. She's got Chloe Chapman. She'll feed her and they miss the layup. Tough angle for Chloe Chapman. She was below the block. Still tried to use the backboard. Didn't have it. Zaya Cook fake it in. Finally, we have a bucket. Well, and that's having the bank board there by Z Zaya Cook. The bank is open here on Sunday. That was the first field goal for South Carolina here in the second quarter. We went offensive fouls on both sides for a while there. Javin Nicholson, the long two. Cook lets it fly. Diamond battles in transition. And she was surveying. As soon as she got the ball, she was surveying to see what the defense was doing. And she knew they were protecting Ram, so she pulled up. Eight points for battles. She averages 14 a game. Boston feeding Saxton. Now swing it back around to Cook. We're going to get in the paint. <laughs> Chloe Chapman just threw it away. She was looking for Mallory Bates. Raven gets fouled on the rebound by Chapman. South Carolina averages 16 assists a game. Why? Because this is a selfless team that's willing to make the extra pass. Zai Cook realizes Chapman's running at her. Little hesitation, blow by for the two. Ashlyn Watkins back in, Bree Beal back in. Raven Johnson at the free throw line for South Carolina. You know, they're taking a look at Aaliyah Boston. I think she might have some blood on her uniform. Craig Oates is a longtime trainer. He got a little emotional. I'm calling you out, Craig, before this one on senior day. Well, honestly, a lot of times the trainers spend more time oh, yeah. with these athletes than the coaches do because it's their year round with them. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yeah. 
This has been close throughout. South Carolina's largest lead has been five. Georgia's led by as many as three today. Lady Bulldogs in a little bit of foul trouble, though. Four players with two fouls for Georgia. Battles finding her spot. Can't hit. Evans got that rebound. Thought she was going to go up, and then she realized, uh, no, Aaliyah Boston's between me and the rim. It's a tough one. Ten seconds. Turnover. Raven trying to step around the defense. Scary moment there for Demore for Flanoy. Ten seconds for battles, guarded by Beal. South Carolina basketball. 407 before the half. Gamecocks up in a close one. Welcome back to Columbia, where Coach Abe always says they've got a chance because of this 3-2 matchup. Why? They clog up the paint. They're active. They're disruptive. And she's got bigs that can disrupt shots. We've seen this throughout the game so far. Their length impacting some passes and basically just disrupting. And it's helping them keep this a single-digit lead for South Carolina. Georgia has also led in this game for about three minutes. The concern right now for Georgia is foul trouble because this defense, I mean, it is really aggressive, and you see it's been paying off. They're tops in the SEC in several defensive categories. Well, the bottom line is for this 3-2 matchup, and Coach Abe, and she says this wholeheartedly, Brittany Smith, Diamond Battles are the key to the success, and so she's got to be able to play those two veteran players in order to make this defense truly as impactful as it can be. Battles on the floor, but Brittany Smith on the bench in foul trouble for Georgia. Ashlyn Watkins lost it. It'll be Georgia basketball. And one thing to note, I mean, South Carolina has a very deep bench, averaging over almost 35 points a game from the bench. Yep. But on the flip side, you've got a Georgia team who also goes to their bench. They're averaging 24 points a game. So we can talk about the foul trouble. The key is, does everybody showing up? If you're going to get an upset, you're going to need your bench play today. You know, South Carolina, when it comes to the bench, they get 46% of their offense from the bench. Seven seconds. Lewis looking for space or help. Shot clock violation. And this won't show up in the stat sheet, but that's where the length of South Carolina affected Lewis's decision making. She normally would have taken that up for a layup, but knew the post rotating over for South Carolina and didn't want anything to do with it. That's nine turnovers now for Georgia. South Carolina with six. Boston back out to Cook. Stays with South Carolina, last touch by Georgia. We're seeing Ashlyn Watkins a little bit more. Camila Cardoso has two fouls for South Carolina. Well, Don Staley knows the skill set of her post, and she knows who's going to play better against this matchup zone. I think that's one reason why we're seeing Watkins right now maybe in favor of Saxton. Raven Johnson will reset here, 10 seconds on the shot clock. And Raven Johnson is fouled. Big games coming up. Our final Big Monday doubleheader before Champ Week. North Carolina taking on Florida State at 7. And then Baylor squaring off against Oklahoma State. Want to let you know, too, on Super Tuesday, NC State facing Duke at 7. And then Kansas hosting Texas Tech. All four of those games on ESPN and the app. First one won't go for South Carolina. Just 60% from the charity stripe today. Raven gets the second.
Three and a half minutes without a bucket for Georgia, and it continues. Aliyah Boston with the rebound. Well, that was another shot that was affected by the length of South Carolina with Watkins rotating over. Audrey Warren waiting to check in at the table for Georgia. She's got two fouls. Watkins in the high post. Boston calling for it. Boston's first point to the second quarter. She had 11 in the first quarter. For all the post out there, you got to love the post to post action. When the post sets up their fellow low post for that easy to, oh, I shouldn't say easy. Boston makes it look easy. She's got a few people defending her. <laughs> Snatched out of the air by Aaliyah. Against the 3 2 matchup. You're vulnerable when it goes to the high post. Watkins just patient, waiting to see that Boston had this seal. Leads her to the bucket for the two. Raven Johnson to inbound immediately to Watkins. Five seconds. Got to shoot. And it's a shot clock violation on South Carolina. Credit the matchup zone. There are, most people go high on ball screen in man in the shot clock. Don Staley said, we put a lot of new stuff in since the last time we played Georgia. That time though, all they needed to do is probably overload it to get the shot. Two points for Georgia in over eight minutes. Second foul on Boston. So Leticia here is going to come replace Aaliyah Boston. So we've seen here play the guard. We've seen her play the forward. And now she's probably going to play the center position for South Carolina. The versatility and the luxury that Don Staley has in terms of the versatility of her players. And they're pretty good, too. They're not bad. First points for Georgia in almost five and a half minutes. Cook in the corner. There it is. Ten points for Zaya. Largest lead for South Carolina. Diamond Battles trying to respond. Gamecocks have it. They can hold for the last shot of the half. Raven Johnson, true point guard. As soon as she got the alley, glanced at the shot clock and then knew immediately, let's wait for one. They'll put it in Cook's hands and Dawn Staley is gonna call timeout. We step aside for 30 seconds. Be right back, 13.3 on the clock. So Don Staley, talking to the officials on the sideline, upset about something. She called timeout right before this. Well, she was upset. She thought it was an illegal screen on Georgia on that double high oh, okay. earlier, and she wanted that play call. But this is something Don does a lot. She'll call end of the halftime outs because she wants to see, especially her younger players, execute into the game situations. Preparing for the postseason? Exactly. Always building for April. Georgia brings the trap. South Carolina ball. 8.1 on the shot clock, on the clock. A travel on Leticia here. So now Georgia will be the one to take the final shot of the half. Alicia Lewis.
South Carolina closes on a 10 to 2 run. Aaliyah Boston today on her senior day, 13 points, 11 of those coming in the first quarter. The game day crew has you covered after the break, but South Carolina up at the half. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN, the final regular season game of the year here in Columbia. Senior day as well. South Carolina on top of Georgia, 35 to 27. This senior class came in as number one in the nation. They have not disappointed over their four years in Columbia. All they've done is win. win. You won over the hearts of our staff, our team, our community, and our fans. Oh, you're the most selfless individual of the group. I know you're going to be super successful because you were the ultimate teammate, and I love you for it. Leticia, did I get that right, L.A.? The most versatile player that I've ever coached. Thank you for sharing in your heart, your mind, your spirit with all of us. Love you, L.A. Rebuild, thank you for being the low-maintenance, high-performing individual that you've been for us for four years. I know you're going to leave a void that we're never going to be able to fill. Bree, I love you and I'm going to miss you. Zaya Cook, I know it wasn't easy to make the decision to come to South Carolina, but when you did, you were all in. Thank you for sticking with me through the good, the bad, the ugly, and now we get to see the best. Zai, I'm super proud of you and you know I love you to death. Aaliyah, I've never met an incredible superstar that was so down to earth. And guess what? You're not done yet. So walk into being the first pick of the 2023 WNBA draft. Smile, cry, pray. Aaliyah, I love you more than you know. As we say goodbye, we know that your impact will live forever. Thank you for sharing all of you with all of us. And we wish you nothing but God's favor. A cool game to be a part of for sure. And these seniors in the first half, they were challenged by Georgia's defense, but they definitely had a big impact this senior class. You got a little stat for us, Christy? Up to 35 points, 32 by this senior class. Yeah, pretty good. Um, they were challenged, though, by Georgia, but you got that veteran mentality. They've seen pretty much everything now at this point. They bend, they never break. They know how to respond. So in the first quarter, it was Aaliyah Boston leading the offense with the seals, with the offensive rebounds, with her presence in the paint. Started off slow in the second quarter, so it's the one-two punch. Zaya Cook then picks it up from the outside, pushing pace in transition, taking it off the bounds. Zaya Cook coming up big in that second quarter for the Gamecocks. Yeah, both of those players in double figures. Boston with 13, Cook with 10. Georgia was held without a field goal for the final six minutes and 15 seconds of the quarter. Well, some of it was shot selection. I think it's really key when you play South Carolina. Don't take the shots they want you to take. Take the shots that you know are best for your team. And then obviously the foul trouble definitely affected the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, Georgia had four players pick up two fouls. So you get some of that back here in the third quarter. What are you looking for for Georgia right now? I think they've got to start strong in this third quarter. You've got to cut into this lead a little bit. And honestly, just be who they have been. Execute on offense, rely on your veteran leadership of Diamond Battles, and then D up on the other end. Chloe Chapman here waiting on the screen. They get Jordan Isaacs on the roll, but she runs right into Aaliyah Boston. Possession arrow to South Carolina. Boston does have two fouls. We'll just screen on the ball action by Georgia. Jordan Isaac rolls. Great rotation by Aaliyah Boston. Just walls up. Cook in the corner. Short off the front of the iron. And nobody touched it. It'll be Georgia basketball. And you're seeing South Carolina have success there with that formation because it's putting pressure on the back line. That's why Zaya Cook keeps getting that open look in the corner. This was a close first meeting between these two teams. It was back on January 2nd, so a lot has changed since then. But Georgia actually led for 23 minutes in that game. 
I mean, it was truly a tale of two halves in the first meeting. Georgia starting off so well offensively, shooting well. Second half definitely cooled off, and the flip for South Carolina struggled from the field early, and then Zy Cook got going in the second half. Yeah, I'd say 31 points for Cook in that first meeting. Aaliyah Boston had just four, so she's well past that today with 13. Boston short on the lay-in. Victoria Saxton will go to the free throw line. South Carolina also today with a win today. Trying to win that SEC regular season title outright. They already have a share of it. But as Dawn Staley said coming into this one, uh, we don't really want to share it. We want it just to be ours. Athletes don't like to share. Nope. Athletes do not want to share a championship. South Carolina has won 34 straight games. Their last loss... It was in Greenville at the, or it was in Nashville at the SEC tournament last year in the championship game to Kentucky. So when you talk about this win streak, it's not like they've snuck up on people. They have had a bullet, I mean, they've had a target on their back this entire season. They have won at UConn. They have won at Stanford. They have won at Tennessee. It's really remarkable when I think about what this team has done this season compared to even a year ago. Diamond battles on the pull-up. She's got 10. Hey, look at the numbers during this 34-game win streak, too, for South Carolina. It's been impressive. Obviously, a national championship is included in this win streak. The point differential, though, plus 30. <laughs> That's the thing. Their offense is better this year. Their defense is better this year. Their bench is so much better this year. Their field goal percentage defense is better. But the tail everyone was worried about coming into this season was going to be point guard play where their turnovers are down. And we see how well they're executing offensively. Aaliyah Boston with 15. 15 points, six rebounds. Alicia Lewis. Little crossover step back. It pops out. There's going to be a foul on the rebound. Bill gets called with a hold there yep. as Audrey Warren was crashing. For first. Fresh 20 for the Lady Bulldogs. Audrey Warren, the Texas transfer. Too much on the layup. Kira Fletcher going to the free throw line. That's on Alicia Lewis. Well, that's a veteran move by Fletcher. No one stopped her, her so first. she just went coast to coast yep. there. Kira Fletcher transferring in from Georgia Tech this season. She's become that starting point guard. They like bringing Raven Johnson in off the bench for a little change of pace. It's a great yin and yang for Dawn Staley. And been told countless times how selfless both of these players are. They want to play. They want to be the person that is impacting their team and helping them win. But they are the biggest cheerleaders and supporters of one another. A great example of that is in the UConn game. Kira Fletcher starts the game, and then it's Raven Johnson who plays the most minutes. I think she played 30 minutes in that game. And Dawn talked about there was a point I heard Kira tell Raven, hey, it's your time. Go take over. Absolutely. And, and Dawn Staley told Fletcher, hey, we're going to go with Raven. And she says, I understand. And Dawn Staley actually said after that game, Fletcher's picked it up because as much as she supported Raven, she still wants to get better and help this team win. Raven did have seven assists and no turnovers in that UConn game. I think that's the third foul, yes, on Aaliyah Boston. Well, Gavin Nicholson comes in there and it's a little weak there. You see Boston's hand low, but I don't think it had any impact on that rebound. And then a foul whistled against Brittany Smith, her third. Smith's minutes have been limited. She's only played nine minutes with foul trouble today. 
Uh, Coach Abe talking to us yesterday how important she was going to be to just stay in the ball game and hasn't been able to. Well, I asked her, how do you keep her on the floor? And she said, well, she can't make offensive fouls, but we're seeing it has been on the defensive end here today. Yeah. She's still out there with three. And a turnover, giving it back to Georgia. South Carolina with its largest lead today. Battles getting free at the free throw line. Diamond Battles told us this will not be too big of an environment in Colonial Life Arena. We used to go to UConn every year when we were at UCF, and that was just a veteran bucket by her. There's the ball movement. It finds its way into the hands of Zaya Cook. 12 points now for Cook. Battles looking to create again. Gets to the middle part of the floor. That one's short. Warring with the rebound. Javin Nicholson. Cardoso kicks back out. They'll try the other side of the court. Bree Beal. And she's fouled. Diamond Battles uses this on-ball screen so well. Comes off tight and attacks the hedge. And that gives her that extra little bit of space to knock it down. And then the great ball movement by South Carolina. Selfless extra pass for Zaya Cook to get the layup. Christy Brittany Smith just picked up her fourth foul, so she heads to the bench for Georgia. Mallory Bates in the ball game. She had some big buckets in that first half. This stays with South Carolina. That's tough, though, because this is going to be another 15 minutes that Georgia has to compete without their best post player, for the most part, on the floor. Saxton, bucket. And that's an example. When you don't have the veteran who understands the out-of-bounds defense, South Carolina just made him pay. Audrey Warren, a pretty shot. Coach Abe told us I would love to coach her for three more years. I wish I had her for longer. She only has this season transferred in from Texas. The definition of toughness. Cardoso's shot is short. Gets it back. Diamond Battles pokes it free. And Battles to the free throw line. Georgia down, so it's battle time. Diamond battles, active hands defensively, and she was not going to be stopped here. You saw it. She knew she didn't have numbers, but she was trying to make something happen. Second foul on Kiera Fletcher. You see her poke it out from behind, and then boop, off. Now her coming with Coach Abe to Georgia has been so important for establishing the culture. She's kind of that mediator between, okay, this is what Coach Abe is saying in practice. Now her new teammates, what does that mean? What does she want from us? You Diamond's kind of that translator. You can't put a price tag on that and how much time it saves when you're transitioning as yeah. a new coach to have someone who's been with you and understands you and can honestly manage the locker room. Fletcher tried to force the pass inside to Saxton. It's stolen away by Georgia. Lewis to Bates. And Mallory Bates fouls Kiera Fletcher. That's her third. When we come back, all eyes on Greenville. Another look at the SEC tournament that starts on Wednesday. Champ Week is almost here. The SEC tournament starts Wednesday, if you can believe it. I'm driving Greenville after this game. Um, South Carolina, the number one seed in the SEC tournament and projected to be the number one in the NCAA tournament. This Georgia team right now, they started the day as the seven seed in the SEC tournament. There's a lot of different scenarios. They could move as high as five with a win here and also depending on what other teams happen. But this is an NCAA tournament team. Absolutely. As we talked about, has righted the ship.
since the first seven games of the SEC season. Charlie Cream said today if they could upset the Gamecocks here on the road, they could move up a whole seed line. Right now it's a 10-point lead for South Carolina. Make it 11. Well, I think if you're a Georgia fan, you know that this is a team that can go on runs. Earlier this season, down 26 point, uh, down 20 points to Wisconsin. Goes on a 26-0 run to win that game. Last weekend against Arkansas, went on a 16-0 run. So it's just a matter, can they get stops and can they convert at the rim? I was almost tipped up back in the basket. This will be South Carolina ball. Maya Evans back in for Georgia. Diamond Battles leading the way for the Lady Bulldogs, 14 points. Courtney, and this is a stat that doesn't show up, but how many shots for Georgia have been affected at the rim because of the length of South Carolina? Just two of nine on layups to this point in the game. Oh, I think every shot you take against South Carolina in the paint is affected by their size. On so many levels, almost every shot you take, period. Yeah. Because of how quick the perimeter players are defensively. The length of both inside and outside players. Javin Nicholson did a nice job of getting around Camilla Cardoso. Six points for Nicholson. Aaliyah Boston not on the floor right now. She's got 15.7 rebounds, but also three fouls. But this is where the bench comes into play as Cardoso gets the ball down low because Don Staley's very comfortable using her bench, and she develops the bench throughout the season. And they always come up big when they need it. And that's been one of the biggest difference makers this year for South Carolina. They've improved everywhere, but specifically their bench production. Look at last season. It's not bad, but this season, my goodness, that's 46% of South Carolina's offense coming off the bench. Courtney, going into last Sunday's game at Ole Miss, the bench of South Carolina was outscoring the starters of their opponents yeah. in the SEC. And one other nugget, the bench is averaging 34 points against ranked opponents. So that's what I say. When they have been needed, the bench has responded for the Gamecocks. Bench scoring margin plus 25.6. But something here this afternoon, negative four right now. Georgia, 15 bench points to South Carolina's 11 to this point in the game. Usually a large chunk of that bench production is Camilla Cardoso, and she only, she has two points, both coming from the free throw line you just saw. She was in foul trouble in the first half. There's Cardoso. Alicia Lewis. Rebound by Camilla up ahead to Leticia Me here. She also has Zaya Cook with her. Three point opportunity coming. Miss layup on one end will lead to a layup on the other end. It starts with the outlet pass to a Me here. Little pass fake, powers up and finishes. And just before, it starts with Zaya Cook. She saw Camila Cardozo with no one on her before she even caught the ball. Delivered it on the money. Amihir trying to complete the three-point play. And she misses eight points, though, for Leticia Amihir. She hadn't scored in their previous two games, so big production today for her. The pass over to Mallory Bates. Credit the delivery of that pass. Getting hounded by B. Bill, created something, and found Bates down low open. Tough shot from Raven Johnson. Javin Nicholson. And she has an opportunity at a three-point play. Fouled by Ami here. So I've talked about the footwork of Javin Nicholson, but her body control and her ability to get into a defender 
and keep the ball away from the defender's abil from the defender's arm and at reach. She is so good. And we see the last pass. Audrey Warren just keeping the dribble alive. And you saw her reaction. She was exhausted from B. Beal just being all over her defensively. Bree Beal doesn't make it easy on anybody. Pass into the post, back over to Cook at the top of your screen. Into the high post, down low to Leticia Mihir, who's posting up Nicholson. You just have to be ready for LA to play anywhere on the floor at any position. Swiss Army knife, the skill set. That how much pressure does South Carolina put on you? They know, Georgia knows they're gonna high low you. So because of the foul trouble, you saw Lewis have to go down and try to double it. That's why she committed that foul. That one dropped in and out for me here. 0 for 4 from the free throw line for Leticia. gets the two points for her. If you hesitate for a second, South Carolina will swoop in and get the offensive rebound. You can never relax when you are playing this team. They're so good in every aspect, and they can make you pay. Another shot affected at the rim. South Carolina's hit six of its last eight. Beal to Cardoso. You throw it up to 6 7. Courtney, this should have been a turnover, but B. Free Bill saw Lewis coming at her, so she stepped to the ball to maintain it, knowing Cardozo's going to be open on the weak side the whole way. Great touch pass to lead Cardozo to the rim. All of Camila Cardoso's points have come here in the second half. Rolls around and in for Amaya Evans. Great delivery by Lewis. She created that entire offensive possession for Georgia. Fifteen seconds. Rebeal guarded by Warren. And Cardoso, they're giving it second life. They're going to need a third life. 28 seconds showing on the clock. Fourth foul on Mallory Bates. They already have Brittany Smith, who's out with four fouls. What well, starts with Cordozo's first offensive rebound. There was nothing Evans can do because Cordozo just reached over her, which kept that possession alive. Mallory Bates getting a breather. Sixty percent for South Carolina today from the free throw line. All right, Georgia can hold for the final shot of the quarter. trying to cook and she gets fouled that's the first on Bree Hall Dyer 
Diamond battles 14 points today. Now five for five from the free throw line. Much more productive than in the first meeting. She just had one point against South Carolina. Raven Johnson with the heave, but it won't go. Camilla Cardoso, that bench play, play for South Carolina coming alive here in the third quarter. You knew it was no matter if, but when, when it came to Camilla Cardozo. Nine points in the third quarter, six rebounds. Just doing what she does best, presenting herself, getting on the glass. More points for the Gamecocks. Senior day here in Columbia, and the seniors have not disappointed. The Freshies with 45 of the Gamecocks, 57 points, doing it as they have done it throughout their career, selflessly, extra passes, sharing the ball with their defense, dominating both ends on the glass, and most importantly, Boston being Boston. Elia Boston, 15 points, seven rebounds. Remember, the senior class, their career record, 121 and 8. They've only lost three SEC games in their career. I'm just, I, I, there's nothing to say except yep. just wow. absolutely remarkable. Yes, remarkable. Wow. Ten minutes away from the outright SEC regular season title. They already have a share of it. Such a big part of the offense for Georgia is that wing on ball screen. And Diamond Battles is so good coming off of it. Raven Johnson, though, just gets called for the hot stove touch more than once. Battles pulled up, but then got stuck. She ran into Cardoso. Baseline, pretty. She's just a playmaker on both ends. Uh, I'll raise it. I think she's a competitor. Yeah. And that's why I was not surprised at all to see her come out and play the way she has, because you could tell yesterday when we were talking to her, she was excited for this challenge to play on this court against the number one team in the country. Yeah, 18 points for Diamond Battles. Boston back in. Took a break in the third quarter with that third foul. Cardoso. What a luxury to have her underneath the basket at 6'7". Well, and you see how much Cardozo's developed throughout this SEC season. That time, just keeping the ball alive to herself because she knew that if she popped it upwards, no one else could get it except her. Trying to shoot around Boston, it's a hard thing to do. And Raven Johnson gets pushed from behind by Audrey Warren. That'll be her third. Camilla Cardozo just being Camilla Cardozo, being around the rim. And Don Staley said yesterday, if we can put the ball up on the rim, we know we're going to get it. And honestly, they're getting 49% of their misses on the season, so the head coach is absolutely correct. Yeah, the stats back that up. They're second in the nation in offensive rebounds per game. They average 18. Count it! You are saying? <laughs> just like that. Exhibit A. Courtney Lau, you're so good at your job. You <laughs> knew this was about to happen. <laughs> Aaliyah Boston just pursuing this rebound, keeps it high, great touch through the finish. 13 offensive rebounds for South Carolina. Free throws have been a problem today. 58% for the Gamecocks from the charity stripe. But this is a really good Georgia rebounding team, too. Plus five on the season. And to this point in the game, South Carolina has now doubled up Georgia in terms of rebounding. That's what South Carolina does. Defense, rebounding. Scoring. Scoring. <laughs> Just throw it into Camilla. A sold-out crowd in Colonial Life loving what they're seeing from the number one team in the nation. It's a 6-0 run for the Gamecocks.
You know, you look down and Aaliyah Boston almost has a double-double. 17 points, nine rebounds. It's just what she does. It's why she is the National Player of the Year last season, and she's in the running to go back-to-back -back with that title. And what you have to love and respect most of all about Aaliyah Boston is that she doesn't force the action. She has taken what the defense has given her game in and game out. Sometimes that means she's not going to get a lot of shots. She doesn't care. She's still going to defend. She's still going to rebound. Today, the shots have been there for her, and she's delivered. Camila Cardoso is right there, too, and all of her production has come in the second half. 13 points, six rebounds. In nine minutes here in the second half. So you're saying that's pretty efficient. I think it's pretty good, <laughs> yeah. They're both on the floor together right now. Warren gets caught up in the screen. It's going to be a foul on Bree Hall, her second. So we talk a lot about what Boston does from a stat sheet perspective, but you just saw the foul committed and immediately in the huddle, who's running it, who's talking, who's calming down the younger player, Bree Hall, Aaliyah Boston. Her leadership and her ability to own a defense. I don't think we talk enough about how she directs the defense for South Carolina and how it is just such it's so special, especially when it's a post player who sees everything and handling your team defensively. Now you can hear her talking on that play. Camila Cardoso fouls Diamond Battles. And that's something, she doesn't just bring it out on game day, Christy. If you go to a South Carolina practice, Aaliyah Boston is constantly communicating. Even when she's not in the drill, she's correcting. She's cheering on her teammates. It's, it's constant. It is a luxury for Dawn Staley and her coaching staff. It is so rare in our game now. And the best players are the ones that we're talking about now for National Player of the Year. Yeah. Because they're so rare, but they do all the little things correctly. Yeah, how many times do we talk to a coach in our job and they say, well, I'm trying to get him to be a little more vocal. That has never been the case with Aaliyah Boston. No, and, and you think about who was the great post player before her who did it here. Asia Wilson. There's a statue outside. Exactly. And, and so, again, Success doesn't just happen. You have to have special people who are committed to the task at hand, and that's what Don Staley's had, whether with Asia Wilson and now Aaliyah Boston. And you just wonder, if, when you look at that bench, who's the next one going to be for the Gamecocks if they're going to continue to win at the highest level? Pass a little too much and into the hands of Nicholson. Good decision by Chloe Chapman not to challenge Cardozo there. Coach A playing every play with this team. Outlet pass to Raven Johnson. She's got numbers. Boston to Cardoso. Should have gone up with it. Absolutely. Every, I mean, all of Gamecock Nation is saying that. Every coaching staff member and teammate saying that. A little too unselfless there by Cardozo. And what was remarkable and why I was so disappointed in the turnover was it was the read by Boston. She knew yep. she had the pass before she even caught the ball. Free Beal back in for the Gamecocks. Georgia hasn't had a field goal in almost three minutes. Double team down low. Mallory Bates working her way through it. She's had a really solid game. That's 10 points. Feel back to Cook. She steps into it. Possession arrow to South Carolina. Here's our big Monday women's basketball matchup. It's number 19, Texas hosting Baylor. This is a big rivalry. This will be at the Moody Center in Austin. Baylor's won a couple straight, but this is big for Texas, too. They can move to a three seed, according to Charlie Cream, with a convincing win. They did move to that three seed with a convincing win over Oklahoma, and now they're trying to maintain that with a win over Baylor.
Double-double for Cardoso, her seventh. 13 points, 10 rebounds, all of that coming in the second half. Audrey Warren in and out. Boston blocked by Bates. Shot clock did not reset. Bates again, another block. What a game by Mallory Bates here today on both ends of the floor. Two blocks on that possession alone. And Javin Nicholson go to the free throw line. Cardoso fouls her, that's her fourth. The bigs off the bench for UGA have come up big. Mallory Bates on defense, Javin Nicholson on the offensive end, getting into Cardozo, getting the space, getting the shot to fall. Under five to go here in Columbia. South Carolina on top, 65-54. Javin Nicholson at the free throw line for Georgia. And she completes the three-point play. We were talking, Georgia still has time here. They're not far behind, just 10 points down. You throw a little pressure on? I would have. I mean, because again, because of how good South Carolina is, I don't think you can wait till this gets under three and try to, you know, make up 10 points. But to this point, I mean, it's remarkable. I mean, UGA's done what they need to do with some anomalies. I mean, they have only had 12 total rebounds since the first quarter, but they're making their free throws. And they've done that with Brittany Smith on the bench, but unfortunately, Mallory Bates is going to foul out of this game. And she's had a heck of a ball game at 10 points for Mallory Bates, but she has really battled down low with some talented post players. Brittany Smith, number 24 in black. She is in the game with four fouls as well. South Carolina has just lived in the paint. That's nothing new, but they're plus 20 in the paint right now. Total of 40 paint points, and why I think this is so remarkable is digging in and getting ready for this game. Georgia only allowed, on average, 15 shots in the paint by their opponents throughout SEC action, and then you just see another way that South Carolina can beat you. Now, Kira Fletcher with the mid-range game. South Carolina just making it really difficult for Georgia to execute in the half court because they're getting through screens. They're talking, they're bumping, they're getting through, and it's making it really hard for Georgia to execute in the half court. Second foul on Bree Beal. Two shots coming for Audrey Warren. Both drop in for Warren. Georgia over 90% from the free throw line today. Now, can you get a stop? Can you limit South Carolina to one shot? Or do you get caught trying to bump a Leah Boston through the paint? And that's the fourth on Andre Warren. South Carolina very comfortable right now, just using some of this shot clock, knowing they've got the lead. Free Beal in the corner. Chloe Chapman out with the rebound. Feeding it over to Diamond Battles, missed the layup. Georgia is five for 16 on layups today. Cook in traffic. Boston the put back. 78 double doubles for her career. <laughs> 21 points, 10 rebounds for Aaliyah Boston. Taking way too long for Georgia. Georgia to get into any kind of half court offense right now. 
Brittany Smith, just her second field goal of the day. She spent most of this afternoon in foul trouble. Foul whistled as Aaliyah Boston drives in, and it's against Chloe Chapman. Well, Miss Double Double herself, Aaliyah Boston, just going up, and honestly, throughout her career, that might have been one of the easier offensive yeah. rebound putbacks <laughs> for the senior. 78 now, tying for second most in SEC women's basketball history. Sylvia Fowles leading the way with 86. So do the math. Potential for nine more games in her career. Notice I made you do the math yeah. this time. <laughs> Victoria Saxon will take a seat. Boston out to Cook and they'll take their time. Look, this 3-2 matchup, not something you see every day, but South Carolina, they were patient. They figured it out. And that's one thing I've heard from a lot of coaches in the SEC. It's one thing to see it on film the first time, and then when you go against it, it helps them in that second round so much more because it is unlike anything that they have ever seen. Cook with the miss. Up ahead to Chloe Chapman. And battle shot affected by Aaliyah Boston. So the number one shot blocking team in the country is South Carolina. Yep. But it doesn't even come into play how many shots their length and their aggressiveness affects in terms of their opponent's misses. You hear the applause. It's for Olivia Thompson, the ultimate Gamecock. She checks in and replaces Kiera Fletcher. One of the freshies, one of the seniors. You talk about a player who has owned her role, has given everything for South Carolina, and that is Olivia Thompson. Doesn't see the floor all that often, but absolutely loves being a Gamecock and works so hard every day. Well, and I'll go back to the Stanford win. I'm not sure if she doesn't knock down that oh, yeah. three that they get the win on the road that day. So not just someone who involves her role in terms of supporting others, but when called upon can deliver as well. The five on the floor right now, the number one class in 2019 that came in, they call them the Freshies. Shoot it. Cook will, it's deep. And they get the rebound. I mean, here's shot is stopped. South Carolina on its way to the outright SEC regular season title yet again. Shoot it all. <laughs> you felt it in colonial life. Boston rejection. And the subs come in. Hey, 
121 and eight in their career, about to be 122 and eight. A sold out crowd to witness senior day for a class that has done so much for South Carolina basketball. SEC regular season champs, it's all South Carolina Gamecocks. Doesn't matter how you try to slow them down. The remarkable thing to me about the Gamecocks is they have found a way to win. Sagging off the bigs, guards have produced. Give, de denying the guards, the bigs have shown up. The bench has shown up. This is a really tough team to beat. Yeah, anything you throw at South Carolina, they have proven they can find a way through it. Fourth undefeated regular season by an SEC team. The South Carolina team now 35 straight wins with a target on their back and, and let's be frank we know that there are bigger aspirations than just a regular season title for south carolina they are thinking cutting down the nets in dallas and the one thing we've seen is every team in the country has flaws what i'll say about south carolina is they've got a 35 point buffer in that bench and so if you can't match that it's really difficult to beat them South Carolina led by Aaliyah Boston today. How fitting, the reigning national player of the year, defensive player of the year, 25 points, 11 rebounds, 78 double-doubles in her career. That is second most, tied for second most in SEC history. And she just keeps getting better. Well, and speaking of the, the reigning yeah. national player yeah, of the year. Aaliyah sitting down at the table right now. South Carolina getting the win today on senior day and Aaliyah Boston joining us now. How do you get through the emotions of the day to start this game? I saw a few tears out there. Yeah, well, you know, I, I knew the tears were gonna come, yeah. but we said that once the buzzer, you know, sounded and it was to go time, we had to just let all that go. I, I wanna talk about one of your teammates real quick. Olivia Thompson, not just you, but even the crowd. You deliver the pass. Were you screaming at her to shoot as well? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Always. I mean, Liv is literally the hometown hero. Like, everyone loves to see her play, and she does such a great job, and she's a great teammate. So, you know, when we, she gets out there, we know we want that three up in the air. <laughs> Aaliyah, you guys have been tested. You've seen all kinds of different defenses, different style teams. What sets this South Carolina team apart that's allowed you to come out on top every time? I think just our adjustment. You know, Coach does a great job making adjustments during the game, um, telling us what she wants to see, and I think we do a great job of adapting to that quicker. SEC regular season champs again. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll see you in Greenville. Thank you. Double double number 78 for Ooh, Aaliyah Boston nice. today. <laughs> Second most in SEC history. And South Carolina gets the win 73 to 63 on senior day. The Freshies leading the way. Gamecocks 29 and 0. Oh, they will be the number one seed in the SEC tournament, which starts on Wednesday in Greenville. For now, we say so long from Columbia. Gamecocks on top.